Hi guys, and happy Tuesday. Today, we're gonna make meatloaf, but we're gonna make a meatloaf from the 40s. And this was um, a recipe from 1943, and it was called Family Meatloaf 1943 Recipe. So, um, I thought there was a couple of interesting things in it. For the most part, it's a basic meatloaf recipe, but some, some an interesting addition like um, this, which is shredded wheat. So she used breadcrumbs, regular breadcrumbs, which I made in my food processor. I was so happy. They came out beautiful. Look at them. And um, filled in with shredded wheat. Very interesting. So these, I could have food processed, but I put them in a baggie and just smashed them. And uh, it's kind of cool. So that was an interesting twist, and I bet you it gives it a really good flavor. So what I'm going to do is start chopping this stuff up. This is all we really have to chop up. And then when we put it all together um, with the chopped meat, I'll show you what to do. You're going to need, I'll tell you what you need. You need... Um, approximately two to three cups of breadcrumbs I'm using three I mean two and two to three cups of um, shredded wheat I'm using one I think to, all you need is three to four breadcrumb type things three to four cups so I'm using three um, two pounds of ground beef one egg um, two teaspoons of salt chopped celery three quarters of a cup um, plus the celery leaves we want also and we want some minced onion we want sage chopped parsley black pepper ketchup and milk that's for our meatloaf and then for our glaze it's going to be brown sugar ketchup and mustard that's it very very easy so let's get these things cut up and we'll get ready to mix our meatloaf these are the celery leaves so it's about 10 degrees or colder it is so cold out and I did not miss the uh, cardboard guys today so all the cardboard is gone makes me very very happy and uh, I went to Lidl to get everything that we need, and it was so cold there was like nobody in the store. Very few people out. So, and it snowed again. Oh, I forgot to tell you that it snowed again. Just, a, just a little bit, but enough to make a mess, and enough to make ice, and it's just not a nice day. So I went to Lidl, I stopped at ShopRite Liquor, and I came home because I, I said I don't want to go out anymore today. Oh, these celery leaves smell amazing. People should use these more. And you know, um, in the 40s, of course, they didn't waste anything. So, of course, they would use the leaves and everything. Now yeah, we'll chop our parsley. I miss getting my fresh parsley from the garden. But pretty soon, I think I was talking to my neighbor the other other night, and uh, I said, you have some square, some little rectangular pavers in the back, a pile of these pavers. Um, can I have four of them? You know, I'm, I'm waiting for a 60 degree day. But uh, I'm going to need four of them. He said, sure, take as many as you want. He's, and then he said, March is right around the corner. Like, jokingly, I'm thinking to myself, yeah, 60 degree days will be more like May before we see that again. So, because I have an outdoor storage box that I want to put together. But, of course, now it is so cold. There's no way in hell I could do it without my hands freezing. So this is our parsley, our celery greens. A 
right before I started this, my coworker, my old coworker, called, and I said, oh, I, I can't pick the phone up. I'll never. I won't. Be, I won't be making this till tonight <laughs> with you guys. <laughs> I would wind up on there for over an hour, no doubt. So I told her I can't talk right now. I'm in the middle of something, and I will call you right back. I mean, I'll call you back when I can. So. Okay, there's our parsley and our greens. I'll take a little bit of celery here. Chop that up too to give it a little crunch inside. A little texture in our meatloaf. We had a craving for, for meatloaf after we were talking. Uh, about those little pans yesterday. But um, I got a beautiful German um, uh, baking sheet, and I might use that today. Cause sometimes I like the freeform meatloafs, you know? We'll, s we'll see how big the, uh, the meatloaf is when we finish. If it's super big, I'm going to put it on the baking sheet. It's a really nice uh, German baking sheet that is actually extendable. Make it whatever size you need. I thought that was very cute. Leave it to German Engineering, right? So the sun is out beautifully. It is just frigid. Like even Vaji, he runs out and runs right back in. He pees and he runs right back in. He's not staying out there. <laughs> He's no dummy. Right, Bobby? All right, that looks good for our um, for what we need to cut up and put in. I think breadcrumbs came out so beautiful. I was so excited. Two seconds, and I'm telling you, this is the way I'm going to do it for my stuffed mushrooms from now on because tearing it apart into tiny pieces is for the birds and uh, so we made it very very easy with that and it's a beautiful chopper and I got in the uh, I mean processor and I got it in the thrift and it's one of those um, dual things so it, it comes with a uh, uh, blender also so it's really really cool all right guys I'll be back when we get ready to put everything together Hi guys. All right, we have our two pounds of ground beef right here. Bust it up a little bit. You want a nice big bowl. I started out with a smaller bowl, but as soon as I put the meat in, I said, you know what? This ain't going to cut it. I'll tell you right now. All right, so here is our ground beef. And we're going to add one egg. One egg. You want a couple of teaspoons of salt. You want your chopped greens, the celery leaf, the celery, and the parsley right in. Beautiful. That looks so good right there. All right, we want one tablespoon of minced onion. Tablespoon minced onion. Of course, you could just chop a, a fresh onion if you want, but this minced onion makes it so easy. Oh, we want a half a teaspoon of sage. It's another interesting ingredient. I think. I've never seen a, a meatloaf that had sage in it. So, And I love sage. Mmm, it smells so good. Have a teaspoon of sage right in. We put our parsley in already. We want some pepper.
we want a quarter of a cup of ketchup. Quarter cup of ketchup. And one cup of milk. milk then we're gonna add our fresh breadcrumbs mm, those breadcrumbs came out beautiful I can't wait to make my uh, my stuffed mushrooms with those and our shredded wheat which is so interesting to me very cool all right now I'm going to go and get some rubber gloves and we're gonna get in there I got these rubber gloves from work a long time ago because they were a, a brand that we couldn't, that we weren't using anymore. But they're so big that they just, just awful. So it'll probably fall off, but we got to get in here and do this. This has to be done by hand, always. It's just the way it is with meatloaf. Oh, it smells amazing. I'm really excited about this meatloaf. A 1943 recipe. Very cool. Oh, this smells great, but look, these gloves are way too big for me. <laughs> I might have to give in and put my hands in. I just hate touching raw meat. I really do. All right, I give up on this glove. Mm. Okay. My hands are nice and washed. We're going in. Oh, it really smells good. I always liked meatloaf with a lot of um, uh, breadcrumbs and stuff like that. I, I don't like dense meatloaf, you know? I like... So this one really appealed to me. And you know, back in the day, back in the 40s with war rationing and stuff like that, they used to try and stretch their um, meats uh, as much as they could. So there was a lot of breadcrumbs and fillers used like that. But, uh, oh, this meat's cold too. Oh, it looks unbelievably good. Ugh, the feeling. <laughs> The feeling of raw meat is gross. Alright, that looks pretty well mixed. Get all those beautiful herbs in there and greens. Looks really good. Okay. There he is. Let's wash our hands again, get him ready for his pan, and put his glaze on. So this is my new German pan. It's by Zinker, made in Germany, and it's so cool. Like This end pulls out, and you can make it any size you want, which is so cool. I think that's an amazing thing, especially when you have... A rack of ribs or too many um, cookies for one sheet but this size the smallest size is perfect for our meatloaf I'm just gonna line it with foil for easier cleaning later because my least favorite thing I love to cook I hate to do dishes <laughs> so all right that is ready for our meatloaf so let's get them on out 
There we go. <clears throat> and we're going to shape them into some semblance of a brain. A brain or a, a loaf or a, a paleolithic rock. It looks so good. It really does. Look at that. I think that's pretty good. We can make it a little wider, maybe. Isn't that beautiful? It looks pretty perfect to me. Okay, so now we're going to put the glaze on it. So for our glaze, we want a quarter cup of brown sugar, quarter cup of ketchup, and a tablespoon of some beautiful mustard, uh, any kind you like. I'm using uh, French Dijon, so we want a tablespoon of that. Oh. Looks so good. Pre have your oven preheating to 375, okay? Nothing could be easier than meatloaf. I mean, you just throw it all together and put it in the oven. Very, very simple. Oh, that smells so good, that sauce. All right, then we're going to bring our meatloaf back. And we're going to brush... all over our meatloaf. Oh, it looks so good. It smells amazing. Meatloaf was a very big thing uh, in the 40s and 50s. And probably even the 60s. And you used to actually, some diners you can still get it, but it's not something that's normally on menus anymore. But I bet you a ton of restaurants had it back in the day. But everybody always loved their own recipe. Most recipes came from their mother or whatever, or their grandmother. Of course, um... My grandmother didn't make meatloaf because she was Italian and it's much more of an American dish. Although we do have something called polpettone, which is really good Italian uh, meatloaf. But it has cheese in it and it's just really good. But this looks like one of the best meatloafs I've ever seen or smelled. Plenty of our glaze all over the top. I'm going to use it all up. Because it'll all caramelize and be beautiful when it's done. Because this is going to cook for an hour and 15 minutes, okay? So, 375 preheated oven. And this is going in for an hour and 15 minutes. So, okay, he's pretty well glazed, I'd say. So, he's going in the oven. Wish you could smell it. So, when he's finished, we'll come back, cut him, 
and let you know how he tastes. All right, guys, and there is our beautiful 1943 meatloaf. All the brown sugar has caramelized. It is smells so good. Of course, my smoke alarm went off. <laughs> Right when I felt like Jan, my smoke alarm went off. I, I don't know why. I didn't see any smoke, but I guess uh, it was the oil that was coming off the... I don't know, but anyway, I whipped a towel at it. It went off, and I took this out of the oven just in case. So, But it looks really good. The glaze is incredible. I, I tasted it. So let's cut a little piece of meatloaf and try. Should really let it rest for a minute, shouldn't I? It really smells remarkable. Look at that. So let's let it rest a bit and then we'll cut a piece. Okay, guys, there is our piece of meatloaf. It's the end, which I love. I love the ends. So here we go. We're going to try it. This could be the best meatloaf recipe I've ever tasted. I'm not kidding. It only needed an hour to cook, though, because my smoke alarm went off. <laughs> you can see it's cooked really well. Mm. So I have, um, oh, it's so good. I have some Caesar salad to go along with this. And I'll have that with it. Mmm. Really, really good. So, I hope you enjoyed that, guys. I hope you try it. It's I'm telling you, it's one of the best meatloafs I've ever tasted. So, they were doing something right in 1943. So, I'll see you later. Comment, subscribe, spread that love. And until next time, happy cooking.